Hey, what's up guys? Sam here. Welcome to my channel. The more time I spend exploring the world of video production, the more I am drawn to color grading. So in this video today, I am going to be color grading this footage from the EOS R6. And it starts right now. So here we are in the wonderful world of Premiere Pro. The first thing I like to do is I check my white balance, but it is very important that you get your white balance correctly in camera before you even hit that record button. For more information about white balance and setting your white balance in camera, I have an extensive video I created some time ago up here in that link. So you might want to look at that. Once here, I check my white balance and how I do that is I look for a gray aspect of this image and that is where I'm going to isolate to check my white balance. So basically I'm going to click, come here in the, I'm going to come here on the effect control panel and I'll click on the eyedropper tool right here. So what, I'm going to do with that is that I'm going to look for a gray aspect of my image or a gray portion in my image, not aspect. And then I'll draw a tiny bit of mask right here. So once I do that, I come to Lumetri panel or Lumet Lumetri scopes. I'm going to open Parade RGB and the way I got there is I simply just right click on this board here and it will open this dialog. So I don't know if you can see correctly, there are red, green, blue spots right here in the board and that is what I'm going to use. Once these three equalizes, I know that I've gotten my white balance accurately. So I'm going to open the basic correction tab right here, click on the eyedropper tool and then click on the white portion right there. So if you look at, it's quite faint. If you look at it here, you'll realize that this, you'll realize that this red, green, blue spot have equalized, you know, they, are, they seem to be on one straight line. So that is what I do. I simply hit delete that mask and then that brings back my image. Once I'm done with this first stage, the next stage I want to go to is to make sure I expose my image accurately or correctly. So how I do that is I go down to, I go down to curves. Right here, don't be scared of this curve. The first time I ever happened on this curve, I was scared too, so I don't blame you, you're not alone. So I have gone through that too. So basically what we're going to do with this curve is that if you look at the curve right here, the lower part controls the shadow, the upper part controls the highlights. So what I want to do next is to open the Lumetri scopes. Now the Lumetri scopes always is a compass for colors. So I look at the scopes, I look, I look at all these instruments to make sure that I am well guided to give this image beautiful look and, and make it pleasant to whoever sees it after it's all said and done. So um, I don't need the uh, Parade RGB anymore, so I'm just going to close that. I want to focus on the waveform right here. The waveform is what I'm going to use for the exposure. So right here on this waveform, the lower part of the waveform represents the shadow. The upper part here represents the highlight. So if I pull on this guy right here, you realize that the shadow is going to drop, you know, this whole waveform is going to drop. So I have simply just crushed that thing. So if I pull up here, the waveform is going to leap, leap up, it's going to crush, you won't see anything. So we don't want that. So basically what I'm going to do is to start pulling on the lower part of this curve right here so that I can begin to correct the exposure of this particular image. Another thing I do is I try not to crush my shadows too much. So um, now I'll begin to affect the, the highlights. So I'll pull on there and increase the highlight. So right about there, I think I am good with the highlight. I go to this window here and I add Lumetri color effect 
so make sure the bottom one is selected this is the one we just dealt with right now but you want to make sure the bottom one is called is selected so i click on i click on the middle right here let me take that out i click on the middle right here i simply just pull a little bit you know just so i give it a bit of contrast and then pull this up and give it a little bit of highlight just to achieve that s curve i would reduce this a little bit yeah but that is good i like i said i don't i don't like to crush my shadows i don't do too much on there you know so let's get back to this right now now once exposure is corrected the next thing i want to do is go to hsl secondary now what hsl secondary does for me is that it helps me isolate colors or separate colors from every aspect of my image so that I can begin to dial in and um, really stylize the image and give it a specific artistic look. Once I am done with the exposure, I pretty much move down to HL cell. I will close this. I will close this and then go down. To so once on HSL secondary, I want to go ahead now and get my adjustment layer how i do that is i right click on this portion right here and i go to new items and then come here to adjustment layer and click ok so i drag my adjustment layer and put it on top of my clip here and then stretch it all the way to the end. Another thing that the adjustment layer helps me achieve, if I have multiple clips that I need to color grade, I don't have to go into individual clips to start do adjusting the settings. Whatever color grade I apply to the adjustment layer, even if there are 10 clips underneath that adjustment layer, they are pretty much covered. So I go back here, I come to HSL secondary. I simply look for the I simply look for the key. I click on this tool here, the eyedropper tool. Now I'm going to isolate the skin, you know, so that I can correct the skin. So what I do is when I'm doing this, what I'm simply doing is that I am selecting the skin so that I can separate it. So now once that has been done, I will click on this tick off on this box right here. Yeah. So. As you can see, I have successfully selected the skin. Sometimes it can be very tricky. So I just need to clean up on it a little bit so that I am not selecting what I shouldn't be selecting. Yeah, it takes a bit of time to select this particular part of this whole thing, you know. So the first time I ever did it, it was really, really tricky. I didn't get it right. It took me practice over time to actually be able to do this right now. So. Be patient with yourself. You just might realize that it's going to take a bit of time for you to really get this correctly. So I think I'm pretty happy with the selection. So what I'm going to do right now is to deselect it. Now I'm going to increase the denoise feather or the denoise slider. I'm going to increase that. So what that is going to help me do is to make sure that the is to make sure that the adjustment, the color ad the color adjustments that I make to this image smooth things out. It's not going to have this some really funny looking patches, you know. So that's the reason why I apply this. So I put this at 11.1, depending on your image. Then I reduce this to 25.4. Oops, it's pouring, it's raining heavily. So um, I reduce this to 25, maybe 25.4. I'll leave that right there. So another thing I like to do is I want to invert this selection by clicking on this box. So that will invert the selection. If you notice, what I selected was a skin. So once I invert it, it means that Whatever changes I make is going to be to the background. So I'm just going to add a little tint of teal to the background. Just a little bit of, it won't be too much, to moderation. This slider will help me reduce the, 
as you can see i'm happy with that it's not too much so if you look at where it was like this i just brought it down a notch Woo! did you hear that Woo! the skies and the clouds and everything is angry <laughs> all right so basically this is what i have here so now i'll begin to now i want to carry out some effect on the grain the grain is too green for me and i just need to tone down on the grain considerably like turn the colors into something else so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just go back to curves hue versus hue hue versus hue just means color so once here i want to change the color of these green plants to maybe something reddish or orange so i simply click on this what that is going to do click on the eyedropper tool click on the plant what that is going to do is going to help me select the the greens and isolate the greens from other colors in this image and then all i will do is once i click on it you will see a straight line running across the graph so i'm going to pull it towards the upper axis which is going to give the plant red so if you look at the plants right now you begin to see that the plants are going to turn red or orange you know just look at it the plants are going to turn red or orange so uh to fine tune this whole thing i will begin to adjust them any color I don't want to add affect, I simply just put a dot right there. I don't want to affect the colors to this side. And I don't want to affect the colors to this side. So I simply click on there and start, you know, adjusting gradually to have all my colors dialed in. So as you can see, some colors are not affected. So I need to start pulling on those color as colors as well so that it has the same same shade so sometimes you really need to spend some time tweaking so that everything comes out looking perfect if perfection is achievable why not So as you can see, I have been able to achieve a certain look. The next thing I want to do is to now begin to check for the skin tone. I, the way I do, the way I achieve that is to come here and click on the clip right here itself, not the adjustment layer. I click on the clip, go for the eyedropper tool, draw another mask on his face just so I can check that his skin tone is correct. Now, once I draw that mask, the thing I will now try to do is go back to Lumetri so that I'll be sure that his skin falls within the line of the... As you can see, it looks accurate already, but I would like to drop, because just smell looking at it, um, let me see. Let's lock the, uh, the, the thing and the mask there. Me looking at the boy's skin, you can tell to me, it seemed like the skin is too reddish, you know, so I want to reduce that. I mean, that's, that's how I'm looking at it. It might be different for another person. So I'll come back to the mask here, come back to Lumetri, Lumetri scopes. And then simply take the, the eyedropper tool on the hue versus hue. I click on that. So I'm just going to slightly, slightly, just very, just a notch, very little. 
I'll drop it so that that would, you see, the thing barely moved. The thing actually hardly moved, but I am okay with what it is right now because you can see there's a little bit of a V curve right there or V right there. So I didn't pull on it too much. So it just shifted it a little bit. I can actually pass with the way it look right now. I can actually pass for the way it looks. So I'm good with that. I'll simply come here and hit the lid so that the mask will turn off. So back to my image right here. Now I want to give this image some kind of dreamy look. <laughs> so I come here, I click on my adjustment layer. To achieve that, I want to create a mask on the, on the image here. So I'll simply come to the mask and click another pen tool. So and reduce my monitor screen here to 25%. So that's going to give me space around, around it here so that I can draw a mask. What the mask is going to help me do is to reduce pulling some focus to the subject here. So once I achieve this, what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to use the curve right here. I'm just going to pull on it so that you start to see the, the color, the, the, the color change here. The aim and purpose of me doing that is to pull more focus or attention on my subject right here. As you can see, you will see that there is a sharp line. You can see there is a sharp line here. Let me take that off. You can see a sharp line here. Don't worry, we're going to do something about this. How we fix the sharp line is that you see feather here. We come to feather and start increasing that feather. That is going to give it some kind of gradation and smoothing out that edge so that you don't see anything. The mask and the image itself becomes one. So let's increase the mask some more. I want the main focus to be on the subject and not all over the place. So as you can see, this is what I do with this image. And the last thing or the extra thing that I like to do is I, I go to creative. I apply some vibrance, apply some vibrance to the image. Let me go back to the Let me go back to the HSL. The HSL secondary. I'd like to add a little bit more teal. Just to give it more contrast. I'm done. This is color grading my footage from the Canon EOS R6. Um, as you can see, it looks good and I am truly happy with this color grade. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed every bit of it. If you did, I'd like you to click on that thumbs up and subscribe to this channel just to help this channel grow. But most importantly, I do hope you find value here. Don't forget the best time to create is now. Until another video, this is Sam, and I am signing out. Peace. Ooh,